cataractcoach.com. Small pupil, sneaky, and a dense cataract. So what's your approach going to be in this tough case? So let's get this video. We got it sped up and edited. It's about 45 minutes for the actual original video. We got it down to about five minutes here. So using a spatula to go in there, eye full of little viscoelastic, not an overly filled eye, but just a little bit. And then using that to gently sweep and in order to break that sneaky aid that are adhering that iris to the lens capsule. You gotta do this gently with a blunt instrument because you don't wanna damage that anterior capsule. So going in from the other side as well. Now the cataract like this, you definitely wanna put some blue dye and tripan to, uh, blue dye to stay in the capsule. But remember that viscoelastic in the eye may be tough. So sometimes it's easier to put some cohesive viscoelastic in, do what you need to do here, then wash it out. And then you want to get that painted uh, with a blue dye on the capsule. I like injecting a little bit of that blue dye under the iris like you saw there. And the reason is that helps stain the capsule that's underneath there. Now some pupil stretch and get a good stretch here. This is going to cause some micro sphincter tears. And that should help open up that pupil for you. And then that's pretty good now. Now you can use the Osher technique of viscomidriasis to use that viscoelastic to help expand that pupil even more. And so you can see there's some little micro sphincter tears, which is to be expected. And now with some more viscoelastic, let's see what you got for the pupil. So still a little asymmetric on the dilation there. Ah, surgeon's now going to use some micro scissors to do a little bit bigger sphincterotomy. So cutting that pupil uh, sphincter there, a couple of little cuts, and then now more viscoelastic. That should really open up the pupil for you. And again, putting that viscoelastic in is going to be a temporary thing, but it'll help expand that pupil. There we go. Here's getting that rexus done. Don't make a baby rexus. Get a good size five millimeter rexus. Beautifully done here using micro forceps through a side port paracentesis incision. And once that rexus is done, that looks great. Get that out of the eye. And time for some phaco. So there's the lens, a little bit of hydro dissection. See if you can rotate. And then now more hydro dissection, always a good thing. And then let's get to the phaco part. We'll speed the video up even faster now. So the phaco part's relatively routine. You can do some sort of a nucleofractus technique. This looks like a pretty nice pit being buzzed in there. And then maybe after the pit's done, and then a chop. So maybe like a submarine type chop like Mohanta shows us. There we go. And get that split. You really want to bury that phaco probe in there to get great occlusion and to help split up this nucleus. And so nice chopping technique here. Again, I've sped the video up. You can use the controls here on YouTube to slow down the video if you so desire, but this part of the case is relatively routine. I wanted to uh, mostly highlight in this case the management of the sneaky and the small pupil. So you saw breaking the sneaky, lysing them, you saw being gentle to the capsule, we saw stretching the pupil in a couple different meridians, and we also saw micro scissors being used for the sphincterotomies. Ah, recoding the endothelium with viscoelastic, such a smart move, back with the phaco probe. So certainly as we use the fluids in the eye here, the BSS, to you know, take out the cataract and emulsify it and bring the pieces to us, that fluidic flow can wash out some of that um, dispersive viscoelastic that was protecting the endothelium. So going inside there with a recoat is often very helpful, help to protect that cornea further. And then just taking your time here to chop this up. And another recoat. Good move. Very nicely done, doctor. And so going in again, taking these pieces out, and just take your time with the emulsification. Here's where, I, where the last piece, I like to get that chopper in, what I call the safe position with the smooth end of the chopper underneath that lens material so that in case the capsule comes up, you've got a margin of safety. So here's the last few pieces. Aspirate, aspirate, aspirate. That looks great. And then now more viscoelastic. That's great. It's like four, four coats of viscoelastic there, which is... Really very cautious and very gentle of the cornea. I like that technique. Here are the last few pieces. Again, be very cautious here about the posterior capsule coming up. And that looks great. Cortex removal, let's see. A little more viscoelastic for us, that's fine. And then coaxial cortex removal. That's the most common thing in my clinic as well. I usually reserve the bimanual for uh, more challenging or difficult cases. But that's cleaned up pretty nicely. Interesting case here. So the patient's certainly going to have more inflammation in the post-op period. You got to ask yourself, why did the patient have sneaky in the first place? Typically, these are patients with some sort of uveitis or, or previous iritis that caused that inflammation, and they may be more prone to it now. You want to get these eyes as quiet as possible before the surgery so that you're not going to have um, such a profound inflammatory response after the surgery. And then here, in a case like this, I'd inject some triamcinolone preserved free in the anterior chamber and may even put a depot uh, 
milligram or two or three or four even of trimestinone in the sub tenon subconscious space just for a slow release over time. The patient on top of that would get some topical steroids like prednisolone acetate, and you'd watch the patient in the post-op period to ensure the total resolution of that inflammation. These patients may also have a higher rate of cystoid macular edema, so you may want to consider using a topical NSAID, like a Ketorolac, Bromfenac, or other similar agent, Napafenac. All those are very reasonable choices. And here at the end, again, lens in the bag, everything's cleaned up nicely, and the patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can submit your videos too. Go to cataractcoach.com. There's a link there for submit your video, and we'd love to check it out.